Now, as viewers of this program will know, there are something like 600,000 not-for-profits in Australia playing a vital role in our economy and society. The Australian Institute of Company Directors recently conducted a survey of the contribution made by the directors of those organisations, many of whom are also directors in private sector companies. I had the chance to speak with John Colvin, who's the CEO and Managing Director of the AICD, and I talked to him about the study which was conducted in conjunction with the Centre for Social Impact. John Colvin, you're the Managing Director of the Australian Institute of Company Directors. Now, this is the second year you've done a major survey of those who work in not-for-profit organisations on the board of directors. Is that something that's in the ambit of the AICD? Definitely, Peter. A large proportion of our membership are in the not-for-profit sector. A lot of them are also in the for-profit sector, yep. you know, on government boards and so forth. So it's a very important and vital part of our membership. So we're vitally interested in corporate governance for them, in educating them, um, in advocating for them and those sorts of things. So, and it's quite a large survey. I think almost 2,000 people responded. Interestingly, I think about a third of them were directors on for-profit boards. That's correct. A third in not-for-profit and about a third did both sides. Now... All those who work for not-for-profit boards, uh, are they all being paid? No, they're not. In fact, 90%, according to the, the survey, is they're not being paid. So that's a massive voluntary basis um, for these directors uh, to give of their time for nothing. And they give about seven weeks seven, of their time. Seven for, weeks' time on average. On average. Mm -hmm. There are people who do a lot more than that, people do more, but that's about the average. So even on those who responded, that's over $100 million worth of pretty conservative estimate of time given and probably if you look then right across directors you're talking about a billion dollar contribution to society. Really. You are and that's just simply on the, 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 the fees they would have received had they been on a similar body in the private sector um, but it doesn't account for the outputs hmm. so by changing the outputs by making them more profitable or by sustaining them um, that is a massive massive investment of time effort and also for Australia generally. And if you're working on a for-profit board and you go to the not-for-profit, what sort of skills do people usually bring? I think they, use, they bring lots of skills that they have in the for-profit, so strategy is a very important one. Um, compliance of, of areas is, is an important, but, but also important is, is um, things like uh, risk assessment, finance, um, legal, accounting backgrounds, all these sorts of things are used you know, for the benefit of of the not-for-profit areas. Well, look, I, th I think it's a great, great survey. There's a lot in it. But can I personalise it? Because you're one of that one-third who works both in the private sector and in the not-for-profit sector. I think for 22 years you've been engaged with a not-for-profit called Can Assist, which That's provides cancer support. That's correct. It's probably one of the better-known charities west of the mountains and probably one of the least known sort of around Sydney area, but that's changing. It, it's a charity that looks after country people that have got cancer and looks after them because they've got a 30% ch more chance of, of dying than, than city people. So we've got branches throughout there and we look after them, we help them get to hospitals, we help them, we look after them. We have um, a thing called the Gene Colvin Cancer yeah. Centre, yeah. named after my mother in Darling Point, and we look after the patients there in Sydney. We travel, you know, take them to hospitals and things like that. Well, here's the crunch. You've got all your own personal experience. You chair this now. Yes. So what differences do you see between a not-for-profit organisation like Can Assist and a for-profit organisation? I think it's the level of commitment and passion. Uh, so most of the not-for-profit directors do it because uh, A, they want to give back to society and, and B, they find something which they can really identify with and really help. Yeah, because that comes actually out of this survey. The great majority of people are doing it because... They care about the mission and they do want to, to give back. And when you look at it, do you think that a not-for-profit organisation can benefit from what a for-profit director brings to the board? Oh, definitely. Uh, the for-profit directors bring some rigour, discipline, um, acumen, business acumen, sustainability issues, and also contacts and, and ways of doing things. Conversely, the not-for-profit director also brings passion, brings skills brings different skills to a for-profit board. So th there's, there's a lot of synergy there, and uh, they, as I was saying, um, they, 
earlier on, they, they, the tide lifts for both, I think, in terms of corporate right. governance. So it's not a one-way process. I know some people in the not-for-profit get pretty irritated, oh, well, everything would be right if only they operated more like a, you know, a, a business yes. and had all these financial skills and so on. Yes. But your view is that actually you can learn some things out of being the director of a not-for-profit organisation that have relevance to the for-profit sector. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, the survey also shows that the, maybe the, the idea that the governance standards in not-for-profits is, is not up to standard is actually wrong. And the, the survey says mm. that you know, the directors of both for-profit and not-for-profit think that they're both reasonably about the same. The survey shows that actually if you're a director on a not-for-profit organisation, you often go through pretty hairy circumstances. You're facing merger, you're facing close down. Yes. I think 20% of them said at various stages they've been facing up to insolvency. Yes. They're pretty big responsibilities on your not-for-profit director's shoulders. They are very big responsibilities and it's, it's important that, that when governments are dealing with this in policy that they understand this and they don't bring heavy-handed regulation. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of things we advocate, for example, like needs to be business judgment rules in the insolvency area, which we say have to be applied in the Corporations Act because it applies to all directors. Yeah. So when we're arguing those points, we're arguing for the not-for-profit sector as well. Yeah, so it's not much good saying, oh, well, yes, I know it was... Uh, I operated while insolvent, but it was only a small not-for-profit organisation. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can hope that might be some no. defence, but the law doesn't give you much chance. That's right. And one of the interesting things is that some of these organisations are very small, but it's clear that many of these not-for-profits are large organisations now. They are. They're very large, uh, and they give a huge service to, to the Australian community. Um, and they also carry out services on behalf of governments. So they are huge, and, and one of the things that came out of the survey is that many of our members are on those larger um, not-for-profit bodies. Well, John, uh, it's a great survey. It's really nice to have some real evidence of what are the issues that face a director on a not-for-profit organisation. Great to hear your personal experience. Thank you, Peter.